I am always so grateful for folks who continually watch Ask Dr. Betters and submit questions, especially those of you who are subscribers to our Ask Dr. Betters series. And I hope if you're not, you will subscribe and uh, pass the word along as well. That's where we receive so many of our questions from the Ask Dr. Betters uh, channel on YouTube. So when you comment on YouTube, oftentimes you comment with questions and we take those questions and we use them in future uh, videos. So I hope you will continue to do that. Howard is one of the uh, fellows who is a regular uh, watcher, wants somebody who regularly submits questions. And he writes a good one here. He says that he has a learned fella, a learned friend, uh, who taught in a very lengthy class on angels. He diverged from what he was speaking about of the two to the two angels who escorted Jesus during the resurrection. He said that he thinks that when the believers pass from this world to heaven, that they will have at least two escort angels to guide us and to protect us on that journey. In humor, he said that I'm not going to go to war over this issue, but he does believe there's sufficient scripture that supports his thought. His studies and beliefs support the two events you witnessed when you shared what happens when we die. Keep doing what you're what you're doing. If not on his side, I will see on this side. I will see you on the other. Thank you, Howard, so much for that question. Well, you're. Uh, your learned uh, teacher, I believe, has admittedly diverged from something he cannot prove from Scripture. In fact, it's just the opposite, because in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we have the story of what he's talking about when, it's, when he says that angels, two angels, escorted Jesus after the resurrection. Well, let me read the passage to you. And Perhaps we'll see a little bit of a difference here. He says, uh, the father fixed his eyes uh, on the disciples. He says, but when you receive power, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. I'm reading from Acts chapter one. And you will be my witnesses in all of Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now he's giving the great commission. And when Jesus had said these things, as they were gazing into heaven, he went. A cloud received him out of their sight. Now watch this. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up, you, up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you have seen him go into heaven. Well, these are the angels that uh, this teacher is referring to. The two men standing in white apparel were standing by the men. They were not ascending up into heaven with Jesus. They were not escorting him up into heaven. Uh, they were standing there giving instructions to the men. Now from that, he has what we theologians like to call eisegeted the scriptures, which means very simply, rather than starting with what the scripture says and drawing your conclusions from that, he starts with his conclusion and tries to make the scripture prove that. That's called eisegesis. It's a dangerous precedent to follow. He wants to believe that two angels escort us into heaven, at least two angels, and he's basing it on the Acts 1-8 passage. When the Acts 1-8 passage says nothing about the angels ascending into heaven with, with Jesus. They stood by the disciples and instructed them. We don't know who escorts us uh, to heaven, but we do know this. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 says this, that if we are in verse, uh, um, in chapter 5, he says it, in several different ways, several, several different, different times. But the one verse that I believe is most important, he says, if we are absent from the body, what well, that's death. That's when the spirit leaves the body. That's that moment of death. 
To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I don't believe the Lord sends anybody to escort us home. I believe he comes himself. Now, there may be an entourage with him, but Jesus is the one who escorts us home. We know that if this earthly tent, that's the body in which we live, were destroyed, we have a building with God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. In John 14, he turns to his troubled disciples and he says, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now listen, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will take you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know, when we die, that moment when the spirit puts off the body, when we separate the spirit from the body, that moment of death, the one who escorts us home is Jesus himself. Now, I, I believe that he, blame, he brings angels with him. I can't prove that from scripture. I can't prove it from any verse of scripture that I know of, where Jesus says, the angels are coming to get us. It's Jesus who is coming to get us, far better than any of the angels. So I say to your friend, if he's basing his passage, his belief on Acts 1.8, he's read the passage completely incorrectly because we are not escorted home by anybody other than the Lord Jesus himself. 2 Corinthians 5, John chapter 14, and yes, even in this particular passage, there's in Acts chapter 1, there's no indication whatsoever that we are escorted by at least two angels. That's just not biblical, or at least we can't prove it biblically. And I hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.